दुनिया के ए मुसाफिर मंजिल अलहमदिल्लाम इसमें To sin means to do anything that is against the commandments of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and to do anything that's against the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So any time we break the rules of Quran or we break the rules of sunnah we are committing a sin. Now what did Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mean here by outer sins and inner sins? Outer sin means to steal, to drink alcohol, to eat pork, to consume interest, etc. Inner sins means to have lust in your heart unlawful desires greed love of wealth love of dunya to have envy and jealousy for your fellow muslim to have spite malice and hatred for your fellow muslim to have arrogance pride and conceit all of these things are inner sins and we should know that just as haram it is to do an outer sin it's equally haram to do an inner sin for example None of us would ever dream of even taking one bite of pork. Or just as haram it is to have one morsel of pork, it is as equally haram to have one drop of arrogance in your heart. Or it is as equally haram to have one ounce of lust in your heart. So it means that the inner sins are as important as the outer sins. In fact, the inner sins can sometimes be even more crippling than the outer sins. The likeness of a sin is that it starts out as a small threat. If you catch it in time, it's easy to snap. But if you let yourself continue and persist in sin, then that sin becomes so strong it's like an anchor that holds you down. Our Mashaikh said that a person should be so scared of committing a sin that he shouldn't even come near a sin. The same way that if there is a huge electrical wire, 1,000 volts live wire, the child won't even come within inches or feet of that wire because he's so afraid to be shocked. So just like that the true muslim the believing person is so scared of disobeying Allah is so scared of earning the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he or she won't even come anywhere near a sin. Hafiz ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said that oh my friend don't look at how small or how great the sin that you may be doing but look how how great that being is against whom you're sinning. So it means that there is nothing small that is a sin. Even a single glance that we're not supposed to look at, even lingering our gaze somewhere we're not supposed to see, even that imagine you're breaking against the breaking the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In front of him you're disobeying. Ata bin Abi Daba rahimahullah is a famous tabi among the followers. He was one of the teachers of Imam Abu Hanifa. And he used to tell his students that all oh my students when you sin and you close all the doors from which creation can see you. You lock the doors, you close your room, you close your windows, you draw your curtains. He said my students when you close all the doors from which creation can see you, but you cannot close the door through which your creator can see you. So what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave judgment says, that oh my servant, you took such great care to hide your sins from everyone. Were you not ashamed at all in committing your sin in front of me? You made sure that nobody saw you sinning. You made sure that nobody would find out that you committed that sin. The husband hides the sin from the wife. The wife hides the sin from the husband. The children hide their sins from their parents. The young man hides the sin from his wife. So we hide our sins, we conceal our sins. What if Allah says to us that you were so ashamed in front of creation that you hid your sin? Do I have even less value in your eyes than creation that you felt no shame before me? So it means that leaving sin is something incredible that we have to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, وَلَرُوا ظَاهِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَبَعْتِنَا 
that you must leave all the sins that you commit, the ones that you do openly, the ones that you do secretly, the outward sins and the inner sins. In another place in Allah Ta'ala said, Tubu illallah tawbatan nasiha. That you must repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this word tawbah is a very interesting thing. Because Allah in Arabic said, Tubu illallah. He added this word called illa, which means do tawbah towards Allah. What it means is that tawbah is what you would call in English a paradigm shift. It means that you're living a life of sin, or you're engrossed in one particular sin. It's not just enough to leave it. You have to totally turn yourself all the way away from that sin and orient yourself back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because unless you remember Allah, it's very difficult to leave sin. Just think, ask any young man or woman who falls into sin. And ask them, at the moment you sinned, were you remembering Allah? And they'll say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was so lost in my sin, I had forgotten Allah, I had forgotten the book of Allah, I had forgotten the messenger of Allah, I had even forgotten that I was somebody who believed in La ilaha illallah. I was so absorbed in my sin. So if a person who is distant from Allah, from the book of Allah, from the messenger of Allah, how can that person hope to live his or her life like Abdullah, like a servant and slave of Allah? So tubu illallah means to repent from your sins, but also to change your entire ways, change everything about yourself, illallah, and orient yourself back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Direct yourself back to Allah. Bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back into your life so it makes it easy for you to leave sins. इस बात को न भूलो सब का यही हशर है दुनिया के ए मुसाफिर मंजिल तेरी कबर है